is not at all happy to see the success of another Vaishnava in receiving the Lord's mercy. Unfortunately, in this age of Kali, there are many mundane persons in the dress of Vaishnavas, and Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has described them as disciples of Kali. He says, calls them Kali Chela, uh, disciples of Kali. Uh, he indicates that there is another kind of Vaishnava besides a sincere Vaishnava, a pseudo Vaishnava with tilak on his nose and kunti beads around his neck. And I've seen these people, haven't you? You've seen them, huh? They put their tilak on very carefully, you know, and they're always dressed, you know, just very pakka, you know. And, um, you know, they have the outside, external act down. But Srila Prabhupada goes on to say, such a pseudo Vaishnava associates with money and women and is jealous of successful Vaishnavas. Well, what, what does he mean here? He means we see these people traveling uh, first class uh, with nice clothing, nice everything, everything first class, huh? But then when someone actually becomes spiritually advanced, uh, these people become jealous, they become envious, and they begin to harass them in different ways. Uh, so we've seen this, uh, we've seen a lot of people ejected from Vaishnava communities um, on different pretenses, uh, but only because they were not uh, like that, they were authentic. Vaishnavas and successful. What does successful Vaishnava mean? It means he's got the mercy of the Lord. This is a transcendental thing. Uh, this is not something that can be bestowed by a committee. It can only be given by the Lord. Huh? Real devotional service is completely transcendental. You cannot do devotional service. Devotional service has to be given to you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when someone becomes guru, it means, you know, if they're really successful, means that Krishna has given him his mercy. Krishna has personally appeared to that person. Okay? Krishna darshan, it's called. And this is special mercy, not given to all. So, Srila Prabhupada goes on to say, a disciple of Kali cannot become Acharya by the decision of some high court. Mundane votes have no jurisdiction to elect a Vaishnava Acharya. A Vaishnava Acharya is self-effulgent and there is no need for any court judgment. A false Acharya may try to override a Vaishnava by a high court decision, but Bhaktivinoda Thakur says he is nothing but a disciple of Kali Yuga. All right. That means the real test of a guru is he goes out. He goes outside the temple, outside the organization, outside the protection of, uh, you know, the community existing and he makes new devotees and he establishes new communities and new temples and initiates disciples into the practice of the holy name. That is Acharya. And he is empowered by Krishna to do that. <clears throat> Excuse me, not by an organization, not by a committee, not by a court judgment. That is all mundane. Why? It's created by man. It's not created by God. But when Krishna gives his mercy, that person becomes empowered and they can make other people Vaishnavas. And they can also take ordinary Vaishnavas and make them pure Vaishnavas by their influence. And um, so, first of all, we have to ask you, have you selected a guru according to Srila Prabhupada's criteria? Or have you selected a guru who has, is still in the nest. You know, like the bird, mother bird, has to 
kick the bird out of the nest, the baby birds. And if they can fly, if they can make it out in the world, then they're okay. If not, well, you know, maybe they weren't meant to be uh, survive anyway. So similarly, at some point we have to leave the nest. We have to go outside the Guru Kula, the family of the Guru, huh? the extended spiritual family. We have to go outside and make it on our own. And this is the test, and this is the proof of whether someone has uh, the mercy of Krishna. Well, they have no means of support except Krishna's mercy, and Krishna takes care of them. Huh? They begin teaching, preaching, converting, initiating, making people advance in, in Krishna's service uh, by their own realization, by the power of the mercy invested in them by Krishna himself. Okay? So one has to see, is the guru like that? Has he, is he really a recipient of Krishna's mercy? Or is he still in the nest? He's got his nest feathered by uh, other people in the organization with whom he's in cahoots. Uh, and are they all agreed, you know, to present a, a certain face to the public? Uh, you have to look at these things. Because most of the um, gurus, so-called gurus, elected by organizational means are uh, very... Uh, weak devotees. By weak, I'm not talking about how often they, they get up early in the morning or chant their rounds or anything. I'm talking about um, whether or not they have actually become self-realized. Huh? Are they seeing Krishna at every moment? Do they know who they are in the spiritual world? And can they see who you are in the spiritual world? These are questions you have to ask. Uh, Srila Prabhupada was like that. So there's no need to lower our criterion. Um, we should not accept a guru who is uh, not really fully self-realized because we can never advance further than uh, they have advanced. We should uh, accept a guru only from the esoteric circle only from the Uttama Adhikaris, only from the Paramahansas, and not from, um, you know, who, who, those who have not proven themselves by standing only on Krishna's mercy and making it. So, that's something to consider. And uh, another thing to consider is, uh, what is your relationship with your guru? Assuming that your guru is bona fide, not just an institutional uh, functionary or executive, uh, are you hearing from your guru regularly? Are you offering service? And are you offering inquiries? Uh, and does your guru answer your questions? Um, and does he take the time to um, instruct you, to teach you personally? Um, we do, and, and our students are uh, doing well. Um, so we have to see if a disciple is following uh, Krishna's instructions. Tad vidi paripatena pariprasnena sevaya upadekshyanti te jnanam jnaninas tat vidarshanaha. The self realized soul can, can show you. The absolute truth. Huh? So you have to approach them with service and inquiries. So are you doing service to your guru? Um, especially if you're a householder, you should be offering tithes to your guru. Your guru is, if your guru is actually instructing you, and not just a titulary uh, relationship, but an actual instructional relationship, guru-disciple relationship, the guru is performing a, an invaluable service and the least you could do is offer uh, some uh, tithe 
some guru dakshi, some uh, regular offering for the guru's maintenance. I mean, that's the least you can do. Uh, your guru is taking so much time to help you and uh, protect you spiritually. Uh, he, he's not serving himself. He's serving you by his preaching activities and so on. So you have the obligation to help support that financially. Uh, or if you can't offer financially financial help, then you should go and personally serve your guru. Huh? Maybe you have some financial difficulties or something. Then you should offer personal service or some gift or something to show uh, your appreciation. And the other thing you should offer is inquiries. Rupa Dekshanti Te Jnanam. Why? Because, um, well, if you're having problems, 